good to be making videos again. As, pro as most of you probably know, I moved to Thailand. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of readjustment and kind of just immersing myself in the culture. But I've been living here for five months now and I'm ready to get down to making some new videos. Um, at the moment, I'm living with my good friend, Megan. And we're living on Koh Samui, which is an island in the south of Thailand. Um, Megan, do you want to introduce yourself a bit further? Hi. <laughs> um, my name's Megan. I teach yoga and uh, I make music and I eat fruit. Excellent. <laughs> and where are you from originally? I'm actually from the north of England, but I was living in London for two years, which is where we met. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got bored of London <laughs> and tired, so I'm here in paradise. <laughs> Megan and I actually met at a, um, it was a fruit luck type Christmas party a year ago, um, which is amazing to go to if you have them in your area. It's such a, um, um, a really, really good option for you if you want to meet other people um, on the fruity lifestyle as well. Okay, so today, um, I my, my really good friend Rachel has a website. It's wholelifestyle.co.uk and she's asked um, if I would answer some questions that she has about the vegan lifestyle. Um, and I asked Megan to be in the video as well because I think it's awesome to get even more opinions, um, more constructive um, feedback to anyone who's trying to embark on the lifestyle um, or if someone's looking to resonate whilst they're on the lifestyle. So Rachel has given me some questions to answer, which we're both going to answer. Uh, so let's start with the questions. Okay, she says, how long have you been vegan? Oh, um, uh, it was 1st of April 2012, so, oh, I'm counting, mm, one year and 10 months, so nearly two years. Okay, and I have been vegan for uh, just over two years. Uh, next question. Who or what inspired you to become vegan? Oh, that's, that's, an, that's an interesting question for me. Uh, I actually, the reason that I originally came to the vegan lifestyle was for health reasons. Um, I was looking to find a healthy balance in my life with regards to what I was eating. Like, I didn't feel great on what I was eating. Um, and I was just kind of researching different diets and the vegan diet as just a food diet has been quite popular recently, kind of coming into the forefront. So I discovered it, found out what it was, did some research on it, um, and a plant-based food diet appealed to me initially. So that's why I started doing it. And then over time, as I started eating this way, I started connecting more with the earth and with nature and became, I'd say, a vegan in my whole life as an as a kind of viewpoint, as a lifestyle. As a lifestyle. And was there anyone who, you know, supported you in that um, kind of... Really, like, no, nobody in specific. I think the, the vegan thing was all through my own research. I would, because at that point I was quite kind of, I was quite on my own. It was when I was at music school. Nobody else that I was with was really interested in that at all. So I kind of had to do all my own research online, there's a lot of things online now, like on YouTube I'm sure I probably saw people. I do definitely remember early on in my kind of vegan exploration seeing like Freely's videos, definitely early on and thinking well I'm not going to do that, the fruit thing, that's ridiculous. But but I'm interested in the vegan side of it. So yeah, I guess just people on social media are hugely effective Yeah, in reaching out um, and just my own mind <laughs> experimentations. Yeah. And, well. It was actually in Koh Samui, actually, um, where it all kind of developed for me. Um, I was doing some travelling um, in Thailand, and I came to um, like a like a wellness retreat, and we, we actually live like ne nearly opposite the retreat, funnily enough. And um, I was there. I was at a time where I was much bigger in my body, and I was quite unhealthy and I was um, like Megan I was looking for balance uh, which I think is definitely um, a common reasoning for a lot of people to 
um, to look to the vegan lifestyle. Anyway, and I think it was this one talk that this guy gave, who was actually from North London, where I was from. He was touring around the world, giving talks on how he cured his testicular cancer from um, a vegan, from a plant-based lifestyle. Um, and from then on, I watched a lot of documentaries that they had at the retreat on vegan, on raw food, alkaline diets kind of thing. And, it's, and it became like, um, I just connected all the dots. I connected disease to um, what you're putting into your mouth. Obviously, what we eat becomes ourselves, blah, blah, blah. So that was like the plant-based side of the whole vegan lifestyle. I think for me, um, becoming a, an, an ethical vegan was a development from helping myself in, in a healthy way. Um, as soon as I, my, my health started to blossom, that's when I connected to the dots to the fact that I didn't need to eat animals in it anymore in order to thrive. And that's when the ethical side of it just kicked in. So it actually wasn't at first to me, that kind of developed later on. And I'd say the one person, um, apart from um, who I met at the retreat at the time, the one person who was a pivotal person to me in my uh, vegan lifestyle was Freely. Um, I started watching her videos when I was lacking in energy. Um, and I was watching what she, she was saying about glucose and it just completely resonated with me. I love the fact that her talk is very brutal, it's very exact, it's very honest. And um, that's what ha that's how I like to be, and so I really kind of like, you know, I, I I just started to listen up, and she really helped me. Um, so yeah, that's it really. Um, what does a typical day look like for you? Um, wake up early. I like to wake up early with the sun, usually with the sun, um, and then always, always, always start my day with my yoga practice. Um, at the moment that might be teaching as well, so I might do a self-practice and then teach, or if I'm not teaching, I'll just self-practice anyway. Um, and then I usually have a shower and have some fruit, usually fruit always melon, yeah. <laughs> it's usually always watermelon, that's how, what I like to have to my practice, because it's so hydrating. So I guess um, my practice is quite strong, so uh, I work with a bit of a sweat, so it's good to have something hydrating after, so I almost always have melon. And then usually in the afternoon, I, I like to read or have some quiet time, do some studying, like self-studying or um, connecting with people, reading things online, doing research. Usually do that in the afternoon, have some more fruits. <laughs> um, usually more building fruits in the afternoons. I like jackfruit at the moment, that's my favorite here in Thailand. Um, and then after that, usually go for a walk. Uh, or go for a massage, which we have the luxury of doing here in Thailand. Um, at home it would just be going for a walk, meeting up with friends. Uh, here again it may be going for a swim, something like that. And then in the evening I'll always do another another asana practice. And again here that might be my self-practice or it might be teaching. Um, and then after practice, usually more fruit is <laughs> dinner. <laughs> I'm time for more fruit, so I'll eat some more fruit. Um, and then just rest, maybe some reading before bed, maybe some singing, if I'm in that kind of mood, play my guitar for a while, and then, uh, and then sleep by, by 10pm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, life, life for yogi. Simple, but I love it. <laughs> I'm not quite a yogi yet. <laughs> um, a typical day for me, I guess I'm um, a bit later in rising, <laughs> um, and I... What do I like to do? I love social networking. For me, it's all about kind of, I find myself doing a lot of, um, I get a lot of people messaging me questions, which is awesome through Raw Jam and my normal Facebook page. So I find that as soon as I'm awake, I'm kind of on the internet kind of answering questions or just, you know, um, I don't know, just doing something like that. Okay, in terms of fruit, in terms of food, um, same with Megan. I always start with something hydrating, um, in a large volume, uh, like watermelon. Um, this morning I'm having a big bowl of oranges, just something that's really like watery and juicy. Um, and then yeah, when I get to lunchtime, um, you know, bananas, I love mangoes the best, the mangoes are awesome here. Um, and then more fruit, and then in the evening, I guess 
um, a salad, a big salad or something like that. It's always going to be natural, it's always going to be whole foods, it's never, com it's never compromised to be processed. Um, it's always something that's infusing, always nutrients into the body, it makes such a difference um, to, um, to your thinking, to your mental capacity. The reason, the reason why I moved to Thailand is um, to have um, a typical day to be a lot more free and easy. Um, so a typical day for me here is very different to my typical day in London. And I moved to Thailand just, just for simple living, really. Um, in terms of things are, in, in terms of access, things are a lot cheaper and a lot easier to come by. Such as, you know, we can get a massage whenever we want. We can access awesome fruit whenever we want. Um, we can. It's just a lot less congested. Definitely, um, island life is a lot like, a lot less congested. And I know that there's a lot of fruity people who would also like to have a typical day where it's just where there's just more access to natural elements. Um, and so. Yeah, simple living um, is key, I think, to this lifestyle, and that's what attracted me to have a better, a better um, or different um, typical day, which is not a typical day in London. But I think the thing that people forget and the thing that people need to remember is we're not specifically lucky mm. to live this way. Like we've, we've brought ourselves here and put ourselves people in always this say that to me. <laughs> people always say to me, you're so lucky to be living there, always. But it's like, it's the, it, it's a, it's decluttering we, yeah, the boundaries. We, this choice. we just did this. Exactly, just decluttering. People always feel they have more responsibility than someone else who's doing something that they're not doing or whatever, but it's just uh, simplifying and decluttering and realizing that you have access to anywhere in the world. It's just believing in yourself and having that confidence. I think the confidence is a really big... Just go, just go there. Yeah. With no prospects. We came here with no prospects. And you just kind of put yourself there, put yourself out there in that situation and the opportunities just tend to kind of... Yeah. We're all the same. It's like, I'm you, you're me. We're, we're all the same people. We all, we all have the same desires and the same dreams and we're, we're no special. Um, you know, in, in our wants, we know that other people want to do it too. So if people say, oh, you're so lucky, I wish I could do that. But you can do it as well. It's I'm just sure that. having that, that confidence to do it. What's your favorite fruit? I go through stages of my favorite fruits. I think I'm not, I think it's similar for everybody. Like I'll have a stage where I'm just crazy about a fruit and then I'll eat it to death and then not eat it for a while. Mm. Um, I've been through a stage of all kinds of fruits. In the summer, my favorite was peaches in England. So in England, that, that was an option, like the flat donut peaches. I went through boxes of those. But at the moment, here in Thailand, it's jackfruit. That has to be my favorite here. So I think, as you can tell, it very much depends on where I am and what I'm doing and what the season is like. So it tends to be, a, I tend to gravitate towards a seasonal local fruit. Um, so when those peaches were in in England summer, I loved that. And then when it started to get into winter, I was starting to move on to like Sharon fruit, persimmons. But then I came to Thailand and I discovered jackfruit and I just, I love it. I love jackfruit. Okay, my favourite fruit. Like Megan said, um, it kind of depends where I am. I mean, when I was in London, I loved the mangoes. Um, but now I'm here. I didn't like the mangoes at first, but I really love the Thai mangoes now. I would say that they're my favourite fruit. Um, I have favourite fruit for different reasons type thing, but also I have a, yellow is my favourite colour fruit as well, because um, I think it represents like sunshine and yellow is happiness and, um, and it really appeals to me. So I'd say generally um, my favourite colour fruit is yellow. Okay. Yeah, and my favourite uh, fruit is mango. Okay, what's your favourite vegetable? I don't really eat vegetables. I used to eat them more so, but um, the more I've kind of got into this lifestyle and been influenced very much by Anne Osborne, who's one of my favourite people in the in the whole kind of um, vegan fruit movement, um, I've just been more drawn to eating one of meals of fruit and then non-sweet fruits like tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, things like that. I love things like that. But vegetables, I don't really eat them very much. My favourite vegetable is um, for leafy greens. I love um, like um, rainbow chard and kale, uh, but that's more leafy vegetables. For root vegetables, I love potatoes. I love white potatoes and I love sweet potatoes. 
I'm definitely a potato gal. I love that. Um, leafy, leafy greens, gotta be baby spinach for me. I love baby spinach, but not really so much here in Thailand. The spinach is okay, but again, see this is the thing, it very much depends on where you are, seasonal, local, and in England, the spinach is the best, but mm -hmm. here, medium. Okay. Um, what's your favorite recipe? Oh, my favorite recipe. Um, again, I've been eating recipes a lot less because I've just been having mono meals. But my favorite recipe of all time has probably got to be really simple cucumber and courgette noodles with mango tomato dressing. Mm, I would agree on that. I, you can't classic. get better than that. You can't go wrong with that one. And maybe a herb in there. Maybe chuck some basil or cryander in. Yeah. You just can't go wrong with that one, I think really. The more simple a recipe is, the more vibrant each flavour is. Rather than chucking like loads of different in ingredients in there, it kind of uh, suppresses a lot of the flavours. So I think we both find that the simple recipes are the best because then the natural, simple flavours just shine. Um, and I would definitely agree with the mango, mm. the mango sauce. Um, I love making a beetroot and cherry tomato sauce as well. I really love that. But in terms of my favourite recipe, yes, noodles, uh, made from cucumber especially, mm. is my absolute favourite. And I also love um, uh, doing like nor nori wraps as well with loads of vegetables and a sauce in it. I think that's definitely my happy place. Um, I think that's my, my, my favourite my favorite recipe. And I love a bowl of fruit as well, um, which that's obviously is not a recipe, but it's still a meal to, to both of us, so yeah. Um, okay, did you have any medical conditions that you have healed or improved since going vegan? Yes, uh, when I first went vegan, I was kind of it, mm, coming towards the end well, coming towards the beginning of recovery from a restrictive eating disorder. So um, I was very s small, I was a lot smaller than I am now, um, about, thir about 34 kilos, so obviously I was underweight. Uh, and I was just really not connected with my food anymore and really looking to kind of find balance with what I was eating and be able to, to eat and feel like good about it and feel happy about what I was putting into my body. Mm -hmm. um, so through a, a cooked vegan diet, I was able to um, just to make a, a bit of progress, really. But I was still struggling with that in knowing what to eat, uh, and I still didn't feel my best. So that's when I kind of looked more to the influence of people like Freely and started to introduce more fruit into my diet. And thanks to that, I was able to regain the weight that I'd lost, um, gained in total about 16 kilos, um, and kind of replenished all my stores. I had a recent blood test, and it was completely sufficient in everything. Um, you mean you're getting everything you need from a raw vegan diet? <laughs> everything I need from fruit, oh my gosh. Oh my god, crazy. <laughs> um, but, I mean, that's just a testament to it, because I came from nothing. Like, all my stores were empty, because I hadn't been eating anything, so that just shows that you really can get all the nutrients that you need from plants. Yeah. yeah. Heal, heal the body and also I've come a long way in my thinking and I think it's helped to heal my mind as well. Yes, it's not just like medical conditions that I healed, it's also mental conditions and these battles that a lot of women face um, in society, right? Like with all the pressures and if you succumb to them then yeah, a lot of conditioning is apparent to a lot of women. Um, so. Yeah, um, right. Uh, <laughs> my medical condition, my only really med medical condition was my polycystic ovaries, uh, which I've completely cured, and I'm still seeing, um, I'm still seeing elevated positive effects from my raw vegan lifestyle. Um, you know, I cured. I was probably the opposite from Megan, you know, I was much larger than I am now and I also cured my mental conditioning from um, trying to manage my polycystic ovaries with the help of mainstream advice and I ignored all of that which I've gone through in another video. If you just search Hannah Lippman polycystic ovaries I talk about 
uh, what happened and what brought me to this lifestyle. Um, and yes, so that's completely gone now, which is relatively unheard of. Um, and yeah, that, that's what I cured really, and just my mental battles and everything like that. Um, okay, what are the positive changes that you have experienced since going vegan? Oh my gosh, so many. Um, I really do feel a lot more aware and spiritually conscious, which as somebody practicing yoga has really aligned especially well. Like I feel I'm, my spiritual practice is a lot more advanced than it would have been if I was eating animals and, um, and the animal products and things like that. Um, really my, my mind is just so much more open as well because it's something before that I would never have considered. So I just feel open to all, all walks of life and all lifestyles. I feel a lot more connected to the earth and to where I live and to what I do and to other people because they're animals too. <laughs> like I just feel so much more connected to all life around me really. Um, I think that's been the, the most positive change. But then like physical changes, um, it's helped my hair to grow because a lot of my hair fell out when I was uh, eating badly. Um, it's helped my skin. I actually had acne for five years when I, between the ages of 11 and 16, so my skin is pretty much completely completely clear now. I get the odd, the odd blemish, as does anybody, um, but that's cleared up. My digestion, excellent. I rarely get ill. We were, we were talking like... Yeah, I never get ill. I can't remember the last time I was ill, which is really yeah. very telling. never really get ill. Um, I had a, a small scooter accident. Uh, in Thailand and that was actually only just over a week ago and this was all like an open wound and already it's com pretty much that's cr oh my god that's <laughs> crazy I know it's pretty much completely healed so the body is designed to heal itself guys totally <laughs> um, and massive massive advances in my yoga practice I feel flexible I feel a lot more free and a lot more sh strong like I've been able to really develop my strength I could go on and on about all the positive changes yeah. So yeah. many. I could talk an hour about the positive changes, it's crazy. I mean, everything from uh, mental clarity to clearer skin, clearer eyes, um, how I feel about um, what I'm connected to around me, such as like natural elements, um, accepting that I am a natural element and how my body is designed to thrive in a natural way. Um, I would say the people that I've met, such as like Megan mm -hmm. and other people, that has been a real breakthrough for me because, you know, when you grow up, which a lot of people do, and you feel different and you're connecting to different things or you have different curiosities, once you start to feel your way into those curiosities and take on a vegan lifestyle, which helps you to become more aware, more conscious, and you meet other people, like, it just helps me feel more at home um, in myself and my confidence is just so different my self-esteem like I think it makes you realize it's not even about a lot of people think that vegan is their purpose but my purpose is teaching it's definitely helped me um, become a better teacher to understand how people um, can help themselves how they become more aligned and I've realized that the body mind and soul connection comes to people who are um, who are more aligned and that's where health begins it begins with learning about actions and consequences um, and realizing that um, not only a vegan lifestyle but a plant-based diet having those connections to me has been priceless and it's been so valuable and the, and you can see on YouTube and whatever there's just more testimonials there's just more noise about it and for me I feel the positive experiences uh, experiences of that every single day um, yeah um, okay, have you had any negative changes or experiences since going vegan? I think the most, the most negative, I mean in the grand scheme of things, it's not even negative. In the grand scheme of things, I don't think there's anything negative at all. But you just have like small kind of bumps in the journey which can be, which can seem negative at the time. So I think when, when you're first embarking on the lifestyle, definitely a challenge can be people that you already know, like family and friends. Who you tell, and especially for me because I was coming from the restrictive eating disorder, people were very skeptical that I was just 
going vegan because I wanted to lose more weight or another trend yeah thing. another trend like they didn't think it would last like oh it's a bit of a phase actually yeah I think that's the most negative thing when people kind of say oh you'll grow out of it <laughs> I have that as well. I have that that's as well. quite difficult to like to deal with when you feel quite strongly about something mm. um, a personal thing for me was when I was in hospital I wasn't actually allowed to be vegan because I was told that it was a manifestation of my eating disorder so I was only allowed to be vegetarian because I was being too picky I was being too choosy um, and that was that was difficult to deal with so that's negative when you have to kind of deal with all of that but over time and as I've actually proved that I was becoming vegan to be healthy and I've regained my health and regain balance in my life and people have, have seen me do that now people are actually interested so true <laughs> like they're like oh oh maybe maybe there's something to it like maybe what you what you're doing is right so i think really you just have to at, at first it's hard with all of that kind of opposition but if you just do your own thing with courage and with conviction and prove it to people mm -hmm. then people will start asking you questions and people will start being interested you know you don't have to preach to people they will come to you literally because you're just living proof mm -hmm. so aside from that i don't really think there's been anything negative but i think the the hardest element of it for me currently now is just knowing what i know yeah and, that's and so seeing true. it Really that's the point. hardest thing. Really that's the most point. negative thing about it. You yeah. can't be ignorant anymore. Yeah. And and you're faced with it every day. Yeah. Every single day. And you're seeing people, like you said, like playing with their pet bunny and eating a chicken leg. Yeah. And like, you know, it's it's hard for me. Like, I struggle to detach from it and I struggle to be indifferent to it. Um, if, when I've seen animals before, you know, when I was on holiday in Bali, I saw some live pigs being transported obviously for meat they were all kind of stacked on top of one another and it was very sad and I had to kind of stop what I was doing and I almost like well I, I started crying and like <laughs> things like this it can be a bit of an emotional roller coaster and I do struggle to detach from that so that has to be the hardest thing for me at the moment. Mm, I would definitely agree um, and especially being in Thailand as well everything is definitely out in the open like I saw when I was in Bangkok you know lots of uh, caged ducks and that really kind of got to me. Maybe people don't hide from it like they do in the West. Yeah, yeah. which is a blessing as well. I think it makes you more um, outward in your um, in your decisions. And I definitely don't want to be a part of that. So as much as I'm reminded every day of the negative effects, it also um, is a testament to my beliefs in in how I feel about what I'm doing. I know that I'm doing good in the world. Um, you know, if it, it takes um, you know. Every, everyone needs to do a part, so I think, yes, we have these negative uh, reminders around us, but it's still ultimately a positive thing. But also, yeah, like Megan was saying, negative uh, also for me was very much in the beginning when I would literally sit at a family dinner and I was obviously eating a little bit different from everyone else. I just didn't have that meat on my plate. And I could literally silence the room and just, in, um, you know, just saying, yeah, because I'm vegan. Like people, it makes people very un uneasy and very uncomfortable in themselves. Maybe it reminds people of their bad habits. Maybe it reminds people that they actually have to change something that they know is affecting them. And that, and, um, but in time, because you know, like my family saw that I healed my polycystic ovaries purely from a really, really optimal diet. Um, you know, again, that negativity of what I was doing in the beginning, yeah, I got mocked a lot and I had to research and speak to a lot of people in order to keep on refining my delivery um, because I did have a lot of negativity at first, but ultimately there's a lot of people who were mocking me at first and being very defensive and they're now making some awesome, awesome changes. So every negativity turns into a positive, right? Okay, last question. What advice would you give to someone considering or new to the vegan lifestyle? What have you got to lose? Like, seriously, at the end of the day, like, there's no reason why you shouldn't do it. And you can't... It's very difficult for me to explain. I don't try to convince anybody to go vegan or try to turn anybody into a vegan because really nobody can do that. You have to do it for yourself. So the, the biggest thing I can say to you is just try it. Give yourself the space, give yourself the time, 
give yourself the respect to try it out, you know, a few months, I don't just mean, you know, a few days, I mean a few months, really try it out, and, and then you won't need to look elsewhere for reason. It's true, everyone needs their own reasoning. Um, You'll find it for yourself, like everybody, everybody has their own reasons and their own journey to, to getting there, and I think you can't look for it and, and try and plan it out and try and find some justification, you just have to do it. And, it's incredible how you really are what you eat. And when you start to change what you eat, everything will start to come into alignment. And mm. really, there's, there's nothing to lose. So yeah. just try it out. And I, I would definitely say, definitely um, ad admitting to the fact that uh, the term vegan 30 years ago is very difficult, very alternative, very, very cranky. And also myself, although I was very curious about vegans, I kind of labelled it to very like airy fairy type people and it just didn't, it had a very no negative connotation to it. But nowadays we're seeing it in the mainstream, you know, people like Bill Gates, Bill Clinton, what, however they're choosing to put it forward, they're still turning vegan. A lot of people in the public eye are turning vegan. It's not that cranky labelling anymore. It's what needs to be done if you want to be a compassionate person and I know that everyone is everyone can be but there's just a lot of tra traditions and cultures and conditioning that we need to declutter and break through and so if you're thinking about sorry if you're thinking about going on to the vegan lifestyle amazing thanks for being the change it's it's exactly it's exactly what we need and you never know who you're going to be inspiring around you oh, like I just get messages out of the blue saying thank you you've helped me blah 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 you don't know who you're helping and just by being that change it's going to ripple onto other people be it your family your friends strangers who ask you why you're eating that bowl of fruit or whatever um so i would say if you're, if you're new to it awesome you've obviously made that connection that it just needs to happen um, and research read talk to other people who are in the lifestyle who the the, Neck. the long term people or um, there are loads of groups on the on the social networking as well. Go to pot, uh, Fruit Lux in your area and just be proactive. You have to be um, in order to be confident in your in your in your new beliefs. Meet other people who are passionate, and then you can talk about it's it. It's really important. You know, it feels so much better like when other people agree with what you're doing, and you can empathise. Like, oh yes, like, I feel the same way. It's liberating. Mm. Definitely um, liberating. Something else I was going to say. Oh, have patience with yourself also. Mm. I think don't beat yourself up about it. I think for some people, sure, like you can, you know, turn vegan overnight and that's great. But I think also if you need to do it slowly mm. and kind of transition, you know, if you eat everything, literally maybe just start by cutting out red meat. Mm. Because that way, if you, if you do it slowly and gradually, it's more likely to become a lifestyle and it's more likely to stick rather than just, because I know people who will get very excited and just go go vegan overnight, cut everything out, and then their body just kind of freaks out, doesn't know what's going on because they've been so used to eating everything else, they start to get cravings and missing other things and they just think, oh no, vegan, not for me. Yeah. So really have patience with yourself, take it step by step, listen to your body, don't feel guilty, but just, just keep going moving forward definitely I know I was a person um, who did transition overnight literally but it's only because I didn't have that attachment to things like meat and dairy like really I had attachment to fish only because I, I loved eating fish which is, sounds very bizarre to me now but um, yeah I just had that reasoning of health over um, these foods that I, I wasn't attached to but I so appreciate that some people are attached to their food be it in terms of entertainment and social uh, gatherings and it's a really um, big thing to do and I appreciate that definitely um, but it's definitely the right thing to do and yes have uh, be patient with yourself have some consistency in on small goals just keep the small go goals happening because this is a long-term lifestyle um, a big change for the rest of your life so if you know that you want to do it commit to the decision over the massive big changes just commit to the decision of the smaller goals and then you'll get there anything else you want to add? no, it's okay. 
Um, thank you so much for watching um, our video. Uh, again, please go to um, Rachel's website, wholelifestyle.co.uk. Thank you so much, Megan, for being a part of my video. That was fantastic. And I will see you all soon. Thank you. Yay! Okay. Thank you.